Welcome to the joy of coding. Hello, and welcome to episode 32 of the joy of coding. I don't actually know. What episode are we on? Um, I think it's 32. Um, yeah, we're on episode 32. Hey, welcome to episode 32 of The Joy of Coding. I'm Mike Conley. Uh, as per usual, we're going to be hacking on Firefox. It's a rainy day. I'm so excited to to be inside and, and working on software with you. I've got a mug of tea because it's so cold and, and gross out. I'd point the camera, except that it's such a fiddly setup that I won't bother. Just pretend that I'm sitting by a sad window with rain all over it and rain's pouring down. That's exactly what's going on. So, uh, what are we going to do today? Great question. Let's switch over to this. Um, so here is today's agenda. Um, as per usual, oh, I have again failed to remember to put this inside the uh, event. So hold up, hold up. Don't uh, just just. Bear with me, bear with me for a quick second. Going to edit the event data. Going to put the link to the agenda at the top of the additional links section. I should have done that before, but I didn't, and I'm sorry. So now, if you reload the page, if you're watching this on Air Mozilla and you want to get a link to the agenda, you're going to have to reload the page and then look under this additional links section. Or you can just memorize this long set of random characters. Um, but you shouldn't. That's crazy. Okay, what are we going to do today? Today's plan, such as it is, because remember, no plan survives breakfast, is where I want to review a patch uh, that's been sitting in my review queue f since last Friday, and uh, I haven't looked at it at all yet, and uh, today I want to give it a look. And then I want to keep going with this crash tab thing, which I have a patch for, but surprise, I made a mistake, and I interpreted the bug wrong. Um, mistakes happen. I am not impervious to them. I make them all the time. And I misinterpreted what this bug was all about. And so the fix that I made is part of the fix. It's part of the way, but there's a bit more to do. And we can go into that whenever we get there. But first, let's review a patch. What are we reviewing today? Well, hang on. Let's play a sound for Here We Go. Here we go! So, we are reviewing this patch. So, handle anonymous Zool feed subscriber UI in E10S. And I actually think that this could probably be worded better. This isn't George's fault. George is the one who, well, I don't know, he reported it. Maybe he's the one who set this up. But, like, the, um, the feed subscriber UI. Maybe you've never even seen it before. Maybe you have. Let me show you what he's, he's working on. So if I were to go to, yeah, Adam here, this is a good example. This here, I'm looking at an RSS feed in Firefox. And, R, and Firefox interprets this R, RSS feed in this way. Like, we're actually able to look at individual, like, in this case, blog posts from Matt Brubeck. And, uh, and it's displayed in this sort of format using what's called the feed reader. Um, but if you were to look at like the source of the Atom XML page, it's actually, it's not showing like any of this stuff up here. Like the feed reader is just this, it's interpreting all of this stuff that represents each blog post and then injecting it into this feed reader thing. And this feed reader, part of it anyways, is written in Zool, specifically this part. This drop down that has like, oh, and look how busted it is, uh, especially on uh, Yosemite. That's pretty busted. That's gross. Uh, and that's using Zool. And uh, I don't think, I think that's the only bit of Zool on this page. But basically this entire chunk here is is kind of in this XBL binding, which is like web components from 10 years ago. Um, and... Maybe tens being, I'm exaggerating. But we want to move off of, we want to get Zool out of here. Because this is rendered in content. And because it's rendered in content, it means with E10S, the content process will render this. And the content process does not know how to render Zool. So that if we were to go to this page, 
Hang on. Let me whoop whoop. Let's go to this page in an E to S window. Here we are. Uh it's just broken, this drop down. Like we're able to render this chunk, but like the pop ups don't work. And it's, I'm pretty sure the functionality in here is broken. And that's what George is attempting to fix. He's uh, attempting to replace the anonymous Azul feed subscriber UI, which is the stuff up here, with HTML. Um, so let's take a quick look. Um, so he's got this patch. He's now. He's admitted that it's not ready. He wants feedback. He wants to make sure he's on the right path. And so that's what we're trying to give him today. Even though he's requested for review, what he really is looking for is, is feedback. So let's take a look at it. Let's figure out what he's done. And it's, you know, it's a good chunk, good size patch. A um, lot going on in here. I just blitzed through a bunch of it. Uh, so the way I like to review a patch sometimes... Uh, especially, like, I'm not really familiar with the feed reader, um, but I can, I can sort of, I understand what it's doing, and I've sort of messed around with it before. I, and the reason I kind of know my way around it is because I was originally working on this bug, and so I'd started doing preliminary investigations, and then George took it. Hmm, that is hot tea. Um. So, how do I want to look at it? I'm going to break this down and look at small files first. And the small files will probably be the jar.mn. What he's doing here is he's getting rid of two things. That's the XBL binding definition file, the subscribe.xml, and then there's some CSS, which is probably just for the binding itself. Like he's gotten rid of, yeah, this thing that basically attaches the binding. So that's fine. This is I'm glad you got rid of that, George. And then subscribe.xml, he's gotten rid of this whole binding thing. Goodbye. And then jar.mn gets rid of them both. Fine. Um, now, what do we look at next? So he's gotten rid of this rule where we were showing the applications in menu items. Right, because... This is using a Zool menu list to render, and I think what we want to do is switch over to just a standard HTML select, because HTML selects uh, are some is something that ETNS knows how to figure out and knows how to display. Although under the hood, the pop-up uses a Zool menu list anyways, but don't tell anyone. Um, so let's see, let's look at... What one do I want to look at? Feed writer. He's so he's gotten rid of this rule, and that suggests to me that he's gotten rid of the menu list pop-up thing. So let's take a look at the HTML next. Gets rid of the subscribe CSS, and then he's replaced. So this feed subscribe sub, feed subscribe line was what originally had the Zool binding attached to it, and instead of doing that, now what we've got is we've got this. Like, just standard HTML. Span, select, here's the select. Um, this all looks right. He's got, so he's got the description, which is, I guess, this thing. Subscribe to this feed using, although he hasn't filled it with anything. I wonder when the description, when would that have gotten? Subscribe using description. I don't know when that would have been like modified before. Whoop. Subscribe using description. There. I guess it's because Whoop. It, maybe it depends on the t Yeah, all right, all right. We're changing this. Changing this dynamically, but the subscribe using, which one is that? Good question. All right. Subscribe using descriptions at the top, and then he's got the... Oh, 
a break, which is unusual. I don't think we normally use breaks in our markup anymore. And then he's got an input, the checkbox for always use, because I guess, yeah, always use such and such. And then it's got the checkbox text in the span. And then the button for subscribe now. Okay. So I think he's got everything. I'm not entirely sure why this needs to be, like, fed in dynamically, but there must be a good reason. It's what we've been doing up till now. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a good reason, but we'll see. So this looks okay. What's next? So, some stuff in here. I'm looking for, like, the next smallest chunk before I get into the big chunks. Feed converter. So I don't know how we get in here, but... It looks like we're in some kind of switch statement, and this must run in the child because we send a message up through the child process message manager saying we want to add a live bookmark, which I guess, I guess that's what this does, maybe when we hit subscribe, but we should take a look, feedconverter.js, let's go to the actual file. Handle result. Oh man. Feeds come in various content types, which are feed sniffer coerces to the maybe dot feed type. Oh my goodness. The user can set an auto handler for generic feed content. The system will prevent them from setting an auto handler for other stream types. This is just a feed, not some kind of specialized application that auto handlers can be set and we should obey them. Okay. So there are many different feed types. We have to like examine them in order to know what to do with them. Sometimes they're hard to figure out what they are, is my understanding here. Handler. So there are all these different handlers. You can have handler is bookmarks wait no no I'm in a, I'm in the wrong section far add live bookmark yeah it should be down here add to client reader case bookmarks and that's the handler handler client bookmarks and the handler is what? Safe get char pref get pref action for type feed type bookmarks. So I think by bookmarks it means whether or not it's going to be like one of those things that you can have in here. Like here's for slash dot, like this thing. I think that's what it means. live bookmarks right so if the handler was live bookmarks I imagine we'll go through here and then what we'll do is we'll send a message to add the live bookmark okay well this looks fine uh, you can actually avoid the repetition here ES6 allows us to just uh, allows us to shortcut when the key and value share the same name, same like so. Send async message, feed converter, add live bookmark. spec, title, subtitle. Although, maybe it would look better like... I don't know what's what's a good... I think we generally do it like this, where like we have spaces on either side. Let's 
something like that. That's probably fine. And then something's got to handle this message, the feed converter add live bookmark thing. So something receives it. Where is that received? Here, in feeds.jsm, when it's initted, we add a message listener for Now, there's one for the parent process message manager, one for the global message manager. Okay, so the parent process message manager we register. I think we can actually get this via, we can get this via services.ppmm. Uh, Let me just double check. Huzzah! Yes, we can. So, not a question, a statement. What's WCCR? Should we be using that for the message for add live bookmark? The converter. So with add live bookmark, we get the data. So uh, we should get you the window mediator. Alternatively, get most recent window. I think we have a tool for that. Um, recent window dot JSM. This is under browser modules. Alternatively, you can use recent window.jsm, which exposes which should do the right thing. Place command book, add live bookmark, data spec, data title, data subtitle catch components utils report error and is that what we did before uh add live bookmark yes we did so that's probably still fine let uh in any case avoid using let uh var in here i think we prefer let now for most cases Okay. Reviewed that file. So what have we got? I got a review. Subscribe UI CSS, then Web Content Converter, Feed Writer, and Browser Feeds. I should probably test this patch out too. Although, I mean, George just wanted to know if he was on the right path, not whether or not he can land this. Excuse me, land this thing. So maybe I won't. I won't bother testing it. I imagine he's still sort of running it through its paces. It makes sense because we're switching away from menu, uh, Zool menu items to not use this anymore, so boop. Don't need that. That's good. Now this, I don't know what it is. I'll have to look at that in a sec. Which one do I want to do first? This one, this one, or this one? Let's do the small one. So browser feeds is something that's probably imported into browser.js. When it initializes, set feed char pref. Okay. <coughs> Fine. And when would we need to do this? When do we say set feed char pref? Char 
Gotcha. I see. Set feed complex value. Uh, what? Set feed complex value. If it's a string, support string, then get the two string. Otherwise, do we do, was that moved somewhere from somewhere? Set complex value. This worries me. This worries me because there's probably code in here that's expecting to read the complex values and expecting it to use like the complex value API for prefs. And I don't know if we can just stash that sort of thing in a char pref get feed. Set complex value, get complex value. Um, complex types. I see. So you tell it the type that you're expecting and it will do the job of unpickling it. Alright. So maybe this isn't so bad, although... Preferences.jsm. Does it do some of this for us? Value type, get the value of a pref. Switch pref type. Hmm. I see. It's not amazing, but it kind of like re-implements the set complex value stuff inside here. Not too jazzed about it. But I guess it's not so bad. been used string data why are we still why are we using this complex why are we why would we use the support string uh, what file is this feed writer dot js
Maybe my tea has cooled down. All right. Set complex value. What is the point of putting it in with a support string? Because we just end up like okay is there at all a good reason is there a good reason for feed writer to want to use NSI support string I'm pretty sure we've mostly moved away from it and other bits of Gecko. If not, it can probably... Whoever was setting prefs with NSI support string can probably just use set feed char pref directly. Set feed complex value. NSI local file. complex value used to handle unicode strings and preferences uses when the, cust the preference value may contain non ascii characters maybe that's why Handled Unicode, handle Unicode. Yeah, like there are just a handful of uses. NSI support string. I don't see any of it in like super new code, maybe Moz loop service. Ah. Okay, maybe that is why. So I'm going to get rid of this comment. I understand now what he's trying to do. Feed char pref. Okay. Let's forget pref web for type of handler URI. All right, I'm going to move off of this. I think this isn't amazing, but it's not the worst. There are other things I should probably be looking at. Always use get attribute checked. Get the list. Where are we? What is this? Where even are we? I should probably start at the beginning. Feed writer. Get selected item from menu list. Magic helper has to be used instead of XBL properties. I guess this comment will need to be updated. 
Uh, get selected item for menu list. It's not a menu list anymore. Probably should just be get selected. Get selected option or something. Or not probably, maybe should just be get selected option. Okay. Let not var. Also, I think there's a shortcut. Um, like I think with uh, MDN select element. Oh, I spelled that wrong. But I got there. I think you can just be like. Can't you just get the. Like, where's a good example? Where's a drop down? I need a drop down. Here, yeah, like this thing. If I go, that's a select selected item, selected option. What's on it? What do we have on this thing? Selected. Selected options. Selected index, selected options. So maybe the way he did it is just fine. Okay. Whoops, 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 whoops. Don't want to be there. Um, whoop. Uh, da, da, da. Init menu item with file. A menu item, text content, this get file display name file. It's probably fine. Though I'll bet we'll want to update the documentation and variable names since this isn't a menu item anymore. Selected app equals file picker DOM file. What's the difference between what does NSI file picker's DOM file stand for? NSI file picker. DOM file. A file picker FP like if I were to create one of these in the browser console what's the file DOM file, DOM files. Interesting. So that's a file picker dot IDL. Get the DOM file. <laughs> Turns file currently is selected as file. What's the difference between that and just file? Get the NSI file. I guess this is the more modern version. DOM file. Okay. Leaf name is not equal Ma's app name. What is going on in here? Expand? Oh. Ma's app name is probably like, in this case, Firefox or something. So if the selected app was Firefox, uh, Then we do something. What do we do? What do we do? If we're 
if we chose if the client app we chose was ourselves oh is not ourselves is not ourselves then we add it so we we don't allow people to select Firefox as the reader okay Fair enough. You probably switched to DOM file so that it would work properly with E10S, because DOM file is something that probably the content process has access to and SI file is not. Selected app menu item dot selected is true. Selected. work would hidden even work right now dot hidden Can these even be hidden right now? Is hidden even paid attention to right now? I don't think so. Always set, always use checked state. Okay, so he's switching away from using get UI element, that's fine. Yep. Yep. Uh, string label. Subscribe using description. I always, I was curious what the subscribe using description is. String label. Subscribe video. Okay, so it's different based on what kind of feed we're looking at. Whether or not it's a video podcast, an audio podcast, or subscribe feed using which I don't know what that means but here so subscribe to this feed using subscribe to this podcast using subscribe to this video podcast using I understand that's why we swap them out stop using UI elements yep handler name Why do we ha pass the handler's menu list into this function, the A list? Also, is there a reason we... Why can we not just query... Is there... A reason oh you know what that's outside of I think that's outside okay Checkbox. there's so much like old stuff going on in here it's hard not to get distracted by it if the event type is click if the event target is the subscribe button then subscribe otherwise if the event is a change Can we add a switch for event type here? That's a pretty common pattern. To more than one type of event. And a handler. 
Then a nested switch statement? Oh no, maybe not. Choose. If the type... What? This is, there's only one. It's only one element in this switch statement, so that's probably not, shouldn't be a switch statement. Right. Standard conditional. This choose client app. And then there's like this promise, no, this callback thing using an arrow. All right. Get elements attribute. Who uses that? Get elements by attribute. There's an easier way to do this. Uh, menu equal this dot document get element by ID and then what was the menu called? Um, the menu was called Handler's menu list. Return menu dot query selector all. Body dot query selector all. That's what's called. Document dot body query selector all. Yeah. Uh, and then equals an easier way to do this so that we use query selector all but there's only However, there's only one call to this as far as I can see using web handle our URL as the attribute name. Might as well specialize this unless you intend on using it elsewhere. So get web handler URL elements something like function URL let menu equal and then this and then return menu query selector all and then web handler URL equals attribute value a booyah shaka that's I think simpler mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And selected he's setting selected this selected 
Yeah, that makes sense, swapping it out from the menu list. Looks like the child stream, looks like the stream solved. OBS showing drop frames? No? Uh, I'm... Richard says that the stream has apparently stalled. Uh, 0.0% dropped frames, apparently. Sending 3168 kilobytes per second. Is anyone seeing dropped frames? I guess if you were, you wouldn't say anything. Um, refresh, still busted. Hopefully we're not totally screwed here. I'll just continue. That looks right. Switching away from the menu list. Sure. Yep. List of web handlers. Oh my. This works. I guess he's doing some kind of like, this is something he'll be proxying. Content handlers. If handlers to length is not zero, then we start adding the handlers. This class doesn't really make sense on a option item. Also, menu item is probably not the right variable name. Should be option or something. Uh, Set attribute handler type web. Okay. Pen child handlers menu pop up. What? What's handlers menu pop up? Probably best to just refer to this as the handlers menu list instead of handlers menu pop up. Let's try to eliminate all of the old menu list menu pop up terminology being used in here. Okay. Uh, we, yeah, we had an event listener for changing. Set up the subscribe now button. So we're clear. Oh, never mind. Handler, yeah, handler's menu list. Yep. Yeah, and this should probably be something like uh, this handler's list. Close, we remove the event listener, we remove this, then we remove that. I don't think you need to pass, whenever you say add event listener, I think the false is implied. It's like use capture defaults to false. So the third argument for capturing defaults to false if omitted. Might as well just omit it. Yeah, 
Use as default. Got the always use check thing, and then we get the handler's menu, yes. And this is the setting the prefs that we had talked about. Going by ID and it sees default handler menu item. I have a feeling there could be multiple of these. So wait. Multiple items can have this ID. In HTML we want IDs to be... If multiple things are going to have this value it should probably be a separate attribute on the node. And that's all he wrote in here. So that's that. Uh, browser feeds. This is for setting the prefs. I'm going to say OK. This is some converter. So this is, I think, I don't know what this thing does, but it also it'll guess I guess get the content web. What is it? The the list of content handlers, list of web handlers. And protocol tables from preferences. What? Dumbs push match. If we match anything with dot URI. Sort them to get them back in order. He sorts them. Now register them. Branch, get branch. You got to line that way on. When does this happen in the parent? Um, content handlers branch. Is this used at all? Is this done in a similar fashion in the parent? Kids, ah, yes, yes, yes. That's what he's doing, he's copying, okay. Yes, yes. So there's, we should see a big chunk being removed. Something about kids from feedhandler.js. Feedhandler. This looks like it's been copied over from feedhandler.js. Do we really? Is there any way of deduplicating the code? All the available so I can return successfully. So he must have added that after registering all the available handlers that get web content handlers. So we get the branch handlers auto. Set auto handler. Services, this content types for us. Services.length. 
This URI has already been registered. Services for that content type equals URI. Turn true. Content type. Registered. Register. We get child lists. Ever since the first branch, that will be six. Is this also copy paste? Yes, from Web Content Converter. So it's copied from... From what? What object are we inside? Web Content Converter Registrar. Where are we in here? Registrar Content. I see. Hmm. I see that a lot of this is, again, copied from is copied from web content converter registrar is there a way both can is there a way we can deduplicate the code by inheriting or mixing in some common logic. All this stuff. Ah, uh, set auto handler. set auto handler isn't defined so auto handler is though because this is using an underscore this is not unless I'm mistaken is there a set auto handler somewhere in here set auto handler oh here it is in web content converter Auto handler. Okay. Registrar content. Yeah. This thing does not define. I think that's some copy paste. This usage of uh, set auto handler. Set auto handler says get the child. I think you can just services.cpmm. Send an async message. Set auto handler. Content. Content type. Handler. All right. All right. Uh, I think I've given him enough feedback, at least. Hey, George. I think this is the right direction. I can't say I'm super familiar with this stuff, with the feed reader code. 
Mono or Mac probably know it best. Anyhow, I've poked at it and found a few things. Let me know if you have any questions. Mike, there we go. And that's my review. I'm going to give him a feedback plus. Because that's pretty much what he was asking for was for feedback. Ah. Richard says I was falling off screen. Was I doing this? Sorry. My posture can be bad at times. Um, let's see. What can I do to keep myself on screen? Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. oh, keep falling off. All right, I'll try and keep an eye on my posture. There's actually, um, there's a tool I can get that, like, I can train it to watch my body with a camera, and then it'll alert me by playing a sound if I, like, drift out of frame. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll try and set that up. Okay, so we're done that code review. That's that's done. Uh, so let's move on to this thing. And I told you that I had made a mistake. And let me talk about that mistake. So where what's the good news? The good news is... Uh, where am I? The good news is I've fixed the patch for... Um, For what we were trying to do last week, it's done, and I'll demonstrate it right now. So, uh, mock build faster again. Oh, conflicts during the merge. No, I should have committed. Uh, what do I want to do? Working copy. I'm just going to get rid of this stuff. us back before we were where we were and uh, resolve it nope okay uh, and now if I run it I can show you I'm gonna well, maybe this will help me not fall off the screen if I, like, turn this a little. There we go. So, what's a good example? So, I've got these tabs loaded in the background, but they're not actually, like, restored yet. They're just sitting here. And if I crash, I crash this tab, but the others restore when I click on them. And then I can crash this one. And I can go back to the first one. I can restore this tab. I can restore all the crash tabs. And now I can go back to this one. Like, it's working how I thought this bug was supposed to work. Uh, where unrestored tabs do not crash. And that's part of it. However, and that passes all session store tests. I'm, I, that was like the hard part, was making all the session store tests pass. But, what happened? Good question. What happened was that uh, I had misread the bug. And what is actually being talked about in the bug, and this is an example of me reading too quickly and thinking I know what the problem is and... I think I would read the summary and was like, oh, I know exactly what you want. I can fix it. And I should have read the bug. Always read the bug. Um, what they want is more like this. If you have your browser here, and I have stuff loaded, like if I restore all of these tabs that so they're seeing in the background, what they want is that when the tabs crash, only the selected one should show this UI. Only selected tabs. So if I have multiple windows open, only the selected tabs should show the UI, and that's when we would restore all crash tabs. Otherwise, when I click on one of the background tabs, it should auto-restore it uh, based on 
you know what we had had from session store before it crashed uh, and in a way uh, in a way my patch kind of makes that I guess a little bit easier I think or does it because we have to remember what we did was we made it so that un restored tabs do not crash but now we have an even like we have a a bigger case where unselected tabs go back into the unrestored state if they crash I think we can work with that still I'm just trying to figure out whether or not I should just explode all the previous work I'd done so let's let's let me write down what I'm thinking. And I've been told that some of you are having a hard time reading down here. Like maybe my uh maybe when the recordings get put up the dimensions are wrong or something. So I'm going to like bring this up. Maybe you can read it. Uh What did I want to say? The work that I did previously in this bug fixed it in a way that was not exactly up to specification. Should I completely blow away that work or should I build on it? I shouldn't try and build on it just so that I don't throw away work. I should make sure it's the best solution. So one way of doing that is to pretend that I hadn't written those patches and think about how I would approach the fixing the actual problem uh, and see if my solution is part my the solution I wrote it I had originally written is part of that okay so let's so let's do that let's pretend I haven't written a thing the problem is that the background tabs so the, so now the background tabs are all remote again so maybe it's background tabs are all remote again the simplest solution is in tab browser.xml when we see the what was it OOP browser crashed event for the tabs that are not Uh, selected. Flip remoteness to false. And then immediately revive them. Otherwise, show about tab crashed. Let's see if that works. So what I'll do is I will base that solution not on the, the patches I've already written, but just on bare tip. Um, so what we do instead here is in tab browser when we see the, 
the tabs have crashed, what we do is we say if um, browser if this dot selected browser equals browser then we go to about tab crashed and we show the we do this business we'll want to show the the page the yeah we've switched the remoteness we've we've done all this business we want to set the crashed attribute to true on it um, we want to remove I think we want to do this in both cases I think we want to do it this let's get to have a browser so we'll do it like this but then else we're gonna revive the tab immediately so we will do session store dot revive revive crashed tab crash tab so what we'll need to do is this dot update browser remoteness browser to false revive crashed tab tab and that should do it I think it's a pretty simple solution let's see if it worked and if that's the solution I end up going with I mean I had burned a couple of days with my other solution And if it's this, if it's just this, that's pretty frustrating. But a hey, lesson learned. In fairness, no, there's nothing fair about it. I hope <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna crash this tab. Aha! So this bug again. Frame loader tab parent is null. Because the browser is pending. You can't flip the remoteness when the browser is pending. So that's one good reason why I could build this off of my old code. Because you can't flip the remoteness when the browser is pending. And so in with my code the pending browsers would all be non remote, meaning they hadn't they wouldn't crash. Alternatively the solution that uh, what was it? I figured it out. There's one point where I figured it out. figured out the problem when I ran into this. The browser has the pending attribute applied to it when we attempt to flip the remoteness. You cannot flip the remoteness of the browser that is not being displayed. Right. Because it's display none. So we would have to like get rid of the pending status of crash browsers. And I think that's what, like, shouldn't Session Store be doing that on browser crashed? Shouldn't it be removing the restoring state? Yeah, it should be removing that. So it's possible that uh, on browser crashed is running too late. Like, this is running after tab browser.xml's event handler. One way we could fix that is um, capturing the event. Capture it in the capturing phase. Handle it in the capture phase. Um, that way 
the remoteness should, like, the pending state should have been removed. And no, that's not what happened. Interesting. So G browser. Let's take a look. G browser dot browsers zero dot pending state or restore state is undefined and or how a G browser dot selected browser current URI is spec CBC hmm oh this one G browser is selected Brow no browsers the last one what styles do you have style Uh, window dot get computed style off of the G browsers browsers three G browser Six properties does it have display none on it display is inline interesting so the frame loader cannot be flipped. So this is a good opportunity for me to defend my original my original patch because I think it fixes this problem. So let me see. Um, let's rebase it on top of what does this do? Uh, HG export. What does that do? I don't think I want to keep that. I think I'm going to get rid of that. Let's prune this off. So I'm going to get rid of this bookmark. HG uh, prune that. And then I'm going to rebase on top of here. Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to prune all four of them. No. Um, how do you undo a prune? Here we go. HG prune, undo. Pruning dead branches. Uh, ruh, uh, how to undo a prune. And now I know that the dead branches are still there. Um, like, they're just hidden. So I can probably... Uh, and I've got their change numbers here. HG log R. Hidden. So unhide revisions. HG unhide revisions. Uh, HG unhide, unhide revisions. I'm panicking. <laughs> uh, uh, HG unhide. Help. HG hidden revisions. Consider hidden change sets. How can I like modify? Okay, time to ask for help. Let's join HG. Hey, 
Hey, do you know how I can undo a prune? Or a S. McLeod? Not undo an S. McLeod. Just also asking S. McLeod. Just my little joke. Undo a prune. How do I undo a prune? So, um... HG help. Is there like a, a way I can like manipulate, annotate, show change the information by line for each file, bookmark branch bundle, config, graft, manifest merge. Ooh, the phase. So HG phase uh, was phase. Draft. That's not right. Phase is not the right one. Recover. Roll back and interrupt a transaction. Revisions. I need to unhide. How do I unhide? Hit hidden change sets. It makes sense to implement such hidden change was shown with the hidden flag. Show all change sets. Hidden set using revisions of the log and all the constants. So higher chance to add to the set at start because now it's given a hidden predicate get the consults the set. Change set phases. Prune. Well, actually, from a read about phase concept for detail. Public draft, mutable, shared, hidden. Uh, need to like undo this. Ah. Help. Help. Oh, man. So this has become a whole thing about Mercurial. I better not lose these change set numbers. <laughs> okay, how is a tip? Okay, I'm going to copy all this in the here. Uh, Ahal says, I think you want HG Touch. Create successors that are identical to the predecessor ex except for the change set ID. Aha! HG touch. Like this. Hidden. Okay, yes, I can do that. Alright. Now, can I give it a range? Uh, touch, help, help, options, can be repeated, revision to update, okay, HG, touch, R, uh, huh, hidden? It should not crash. And then I'll rebase these two on top of here. <laughs> HG rebase R these two to tip dust three zero six seven five one. And then what was the last one I wanted? Um 
regression test and then I follow the path to here. No, that's not right. Here, then it was this one. This one, yeah. Abort uncommitted changes. Damn you, uh, shelve. And now, rebase them. Holy smokes, mercurial gymnastics. We're doing it, people. We are doing it. All right. And then I need the last one. And the last one was... Uh, HG touch R... Uh, uh. Actually, we didn't want that one. That's the one we wanted pruned. So we're actually right where we wanted to be. And now I should thank... Got it. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Ahal from Pound HG showing me what's up. Uh, okay. And now I can unshelve to put the changes I'd written back on top. He wants to know if it actually worked. Yes, it did. Though, I'm surprised that was the only, was the technique required. Like, I've expected some kind of unprune or something, but whatever. It worked. hi -oh. Okay, so now we're back where we started, but we've also got these changes on top. I don't know if this capture stuff is necessary anymore, so I'm going to um, get rid of it. The reason I don't think it's necessary anymore is because... pretty sure it's not necessary anymore. Anyways, let's build it and see. Crash. Hey, it works. Okay. And that's expected. Now, if I crash this, okay, so that's, somehow a crash browser is still remote. Well, I'll have to find out. I've got a, a weird bug there. Probably because... Um, oh, right. So we don't... Yes, okay, I know why. We have this set, this weak set of crashed browsers that depend on about tab crashed unloading in order for them to, like... Um, uh, to be removed from the set, but uh, those don't happen. That doesn't happen anymore. I should probably do that in revive crash tab as well. Okay, but this is, this appears to be working, so I'm actually gonna I'm gonna commit this and create a bookmark, and then I think I'm gonna call it actually because. We're an hour and a half in. I only want to do an hour and a half today. Uh, I started late. I apologize. I was interviewing somebody. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm just going to commit. Uh, only show about tab crashed for the selected tab. Mossip will probably review this.
and that's it. Okay, so I think I'm going to call it there. I know we didn't really write a whole lot of code today, I, but we reviewed a chunk. We reviewed quite a bit, and, uh, and that's pretty good. Thank you so much uh, for watching. I wanted to mention one other thing. So, I don't know if you use iTunes or this thing called Kodi. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, iTunes, perhaps, uh, you've heard of. It's, it's more likely you've heard of, but Kodi is sort of like this nice open source um, media player. Uh, and what I'm trying to get around to is you can actually subscribe to this entire channel so like there's this air mozilla here air mozilla is where you're watching this show right now if you're watching it live Hi -oh! and there are individual channels with particular with with like content and on the live hacking channel it's mostly me but periodically you'll see other stuff like we've got joel mars lost in data he did an episode uh, a couple months back um and you if you're interested in like making sure you don't miss any other shows, you can subscribe to uh, the Live Hacking channel here with this link in the agenda, and I highly recommend you do it. You'll never miss another episode. Uh, they'll, it'll just be right there in your player, and you'll be ready to go. So, give it a give it a shot. This is something new that uh, Richard and team working on Air Mozilla have put out, and it's great, and I highly recommend it. Let's see. I think that's all. Boop. Thank you so much for watching episode 32 of The Joy of Coding. Yes, episode 32. The number is getting so high that, like, it's, uh, I'm having seniors moments. Uh, next week I'm hoping we can dig in a bit more. Uh, we'll hopefully have uh, a more juicy bug to, to nibble on. But we actually got some neat behavior. We, we kind of got what we wanted today. I just, there are some corner cases I need to figure out. But, hey... We're in pretty good shape. Um, I guess I'll just see you next week. So keep rocking the free web, as Potch would say, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye! The joy of coding. See ya!